Welcome to my channel, where we explore the dark side of history. Today, we're taking a look at some of the worst queens in the world. These women were ruthless, power-hungry, and often downright evil. They committed atrocities, abused their power, and left a trail of destruction in their wake. 1. Maria Eleonora of Brandenburg thought her daughter was a monster. Maria Eleonora of Brandenburg was a lady born in 1599 who became the Queen of Sweden for a while. She married King Gustav II Adolf when she was young. Her family was very important in Germany. Her dad was John Sigismund, the Elector of Brandenburg, and her mom was Anna, the Duchess of Prussia. When Maria and Gustav had a baby girl who looked different because of a special condition, Maria was very shocked. She thought her daughter wasn't pretty and didn't want to take care of her. This made her really upset because of how people thought about beauty at that time. When her husband, Gustav, was busy fighting battles, Maria treated their daughter, Christina, badly. Sadly, when Christina was only seven, Gustav died. Maria thought it was Christina's fault and punished her a lot. She made Christina stay alone in dark rooms for a long time and even put Gustav's body in Christina's room, making her sleep close to it. Maria's mind got worse and Christina was taken away from her. Maria tried to leave Sweden many times. She didn't like the country and wanted to go to Denmark to be with its king, Christian IV. At first, she tried to talk to the king with a letter. When that didn't work, she did something more extreme. Finally, when Maria was around 40 years old, she managed to escape. She sneaked out through a window with her helper, got on a boat and carriage, and quickly went to Denmark. She wanted to find what she thought was freedom. 2. Wuzishan the Empress who killed her mother and grandchildren. Wuzishan, also known as Wu Zhao, left an indelible mark on Chinese history as the sole female emperor of China. She reigned from 665 to 705, initially as Empress Consort and later as Empress Dowager. Eventually, she established the Wuzhou dynasty and ruled as the female emperor from 690 to 705. Wu's rise to power involved strategic maneuvers and political alliances. She initially gained Emperor Gaozong's favor, surpassing her romantic rival, Empress Wang, in influence. In 652, she gave birth to her first son, Li Hong, followed by another son, Li Xin, in 653. However, Gaozong had designated his eldest son from consort Liu, Li Zhang, as his heir, as a token of gratitude for her support. By 654, both Empress Wang and consort Xiao had fallen out of favor while Wu consolidated her power. Demonstrating his affection, Gaozong even honored Wu's deceased father, Wu Xiyu. However, tragedy struck when Wu gave birth to a daughter. Disturbingly, accounts suggest that Wu smothered the infant and falsely blamed the emperor's wife for the child's demise. To compound the cruelty, she orchestrated the brutal execution. Of the emperor's wife, her legs and feet were severed before she was drowned in wine. While historical portrayals have often depicted Wu Zixian as a ruthless and morally questionable ruler, it is crucial to approach these accounts with a critical lens, considering potential biases and political motivations. Scholars have recently re-evaluated her reign, examining her accomplishments and contributions to the empire. Wu Zixian's legacy is complex, sparking intrigue and controversy. Regardless of the controversies surrounding her rule, she undeniably challenged traditional gender roles and left an enduring legacy as the first and only female emperor of China. 3. Spain's Queen Isabella forced Catholicism on the people of her kingdom. Queen Isabella of Castile, also known as Isabella the Catholic, was a powerful monarch who ruled Spain from 1474 to 1504. She is best known for her role in the Spanish Inquisition, a brutal campaign to suppress heresy and convert Jews and Muslims to Catholicism. Isabella's religious zeal was deeply rooted in her personal beliefs. She was a devout Catholic who believed that it was her duty to spread the faith and protect her subjects from the dangers of heresy. 
She was also motivated by political considerations, as she saw Catholicism as a way to unify Spain and strengthen her own power. In 1478, Isabella and her husband, Ferdinand II of Aragon, issued the Edict of Expulsion, which ordered all Jews to leave Spain within four months. The edict was motivated by a combination of religious and economic factors. The Catholic Church had long seen Jews as a threat to the purity of the faith, and many Spaniards believed that Jews were responsible for Spain's economic woes. The expulsion of the Jews was a major blow to Spanish society. Jews had played an important role in Spanish commerce, culture, and science. Their departure left a significant void in Spanish life. In addition to expelling the Jews, Isabella also launched a campaign to convert Muslims to Catholicism. This campaign was met with mixed success. Some Muslims converted willingly, while others were forced to convert under threat of punishment. The Inquisition played a key role in this campaign, using torture and other forms of coercion to convert Muslims. Isabella's religious policies had a profound impact on Spain. The expulsion of the Jews and the forced conversion of Muslims helped to create a more religiously homogeneous society. However, these policies also came at a great cost. The expulsion of the Jews deprived Spain of valuable human capital, and the forced conversion of Muslims led to resentment and social unrest. Isabella's legacy is complex and controversial. She is praised for her role in uniting Spain and for her efforts to spread Catholicism. However, she is also criticized for her religious intolerance and for her role in the Inquisition. For Hungary's bloodthirsty serial killer Elizabeth Bthori, one of the worst queens in history, Elizabeth Bthori, a Hungarian countess from the infamous Bthori family, is the subject of a dark and haunting tale that has captured the imagination of generations. Depending on the account, she is either portrayed as a sadistic serial killer or a victim of a conspiracy designed to seize her vast wealth and power. Bthori is often labeled as the most prolific female serial killer in history. Accused of brutally slaying over 600 young women within the confines of her opulent castles, legend has it that she believed bathing in the blood of virgins would grant her eternal youth, forever cementing her name in infamy. However, the charges against Bthori have sparked debate among historians, with some arguing that she was a victim of a witch hunt. Supporters of this view claim that the accusations were based on unreliable testimony and exaggerations. Nevertheless, there are accounts from more than 300 individuals at the time of her arrest, describing physical evidence and the presence of mutilated and imprisoned girls. The tales of Bthori's vampiric tendencies, such as bathing in virgin blood, emerged long after her death and are regarded as unreliable. While some believe she may have served as the inspiration for Bram Stoker's Dracula, there is no direct evidence to support this hypothesis in Stoker's own notes. She has been associated with epithets like the Blood Countess and Countess Dracula. Thori's early life was marked by seizures, potentially linked to epilepsy. At the time, epilepsy was often diagnosed as falling sickness, and treatments involved the use of blood from non-sufferers. Some propose that her upbringing and training by her family may have contributed to her later cruelty. Reports suggest that Bthori began her killing spree by targeting daughters of the lesser gentry who were sent to her to learn courtly etiquette. Witnesses testified about the use of needles and various forms of torture inflicted by Bthori. Some witnesses even claimed to have seen signs of torture on the bodies of the deceased some buried in graveyards and others in undisclosed locations. At the age of 13, Bthori was engaged to Count Ferenc Dasty, an 18-year-old from another influential Hungarian family. They married two years later and went on to have her children. Their residence at Dasty Castle in SRVR, Western Hungary, became a site of unspeakable horrors. Count Dasty himself was known to have engaged in acts of extreme cruelty teaching Thori the art of torture. Thori's aunt Clara further corrupted her by introducing her to orgies and 
A clandestine circle of individuals believed to be sorcerers, witches, and alchemists. The stories of Thori's malevolence towards her servants became so widespread that local families would go to great lengths to keep their daughters away from her service, fearing for their safety. Elizabeth Thori's legacy is one of darkness and brutality, shrouded in legends and contested accounts. While the truth may never be fully unraveled, her name continues to be synonymous with female serial killers and remains a chilling chapter in history. 5. Empress Irene of Athens ordered her son's eyes to be gouged out. Irene of Athens, the Byzantine empress who defied centuries of tradition to rule in her own right, resorted to a horrific act of violence to secure her position she ordered her own son's eyes to be gouged out. This brutal act, committed in 797 AD, sent shockwaves through the empire and cemented Irene's reputation as a ruthless and power-hungry ruler. Constantine VI, Irene's son and co-emperor, had grown increasingly resentful of his mother's dominance and sought to assert his authority. Irene, fearing her son would usurp her power, hatched a plot to remove him from the throne. With the help of her loyal supporters, Irene's forces captured Constantine and subjected him to a barbaric procedure, leaving him permanently blinded and incapacitated. The blinding of Constantine was a calculated move by Irene to eliminate any threat to her reign. It was an act of desperation, a testament to her unwavering determination to retain power at all costs. However, it was also an act of immense cruelty, one that defied the norms of even a society accustomed to violence and political intrigue. Irene's actions were met with widespread condemnation, both within the Byzantine Empire and beyond. The blinding of her son was seen as an act of barbarity, a betrayal of maternal love, and a violation of the divine right of kings. Even Irene's staunch supporters were appalled by her actions, and her reputation was tarnished beyond repair. Despite the uproar, Irene remained defiant, insisting that her actions were necessary to preserve the stability of the empire. She argued that Constantine's ambition and insubordination posed a grave threat to the state, and that his blinding was the only way to ensure peace and order. Irene's justifications, however, failed to convince many. The blinding of her son remained a stain on her legacy, overshadowing her accomplishments as a ruler. She had secured her power, but at a terrible cost, one that would forever haunt her memory. 6. Queen Ranavalona I One of the worst queens in history who subjected her mother to extreme hunger, Queen Ranavalona I of Madagascar, who ruled from 1828 to 1861, is a complex and controversial figure. She is often portrayed as a ruthless and tyrannical ruler, and there is some evidence to support this view. However, she was also a strong and capable leader who successfully defended her kingdom from foreign invaders. Ranavalona's early life was marked by hardship. She was born into a powerful family, but she also experienced poverty and hunger. This may have contributed to her later harsh and authoritarian rule. When her husband, King Radama I, died in 1828, Ranavalona seized power. She immediately reversed Radama's policies of openness to European influence and Christianity. She expelled foreign missionaries and persecuted Malagasy converts. She also strengthened the traditional Marina monarchy and centralized power in her own hands. Ranavalona's reign was marked by violence and conflict. She suppressed rebellions with ruthless efficiency, and she was also responsible for the deaths of many of her rivals. She also used forced labor to build palaces and other public works projects. Despite her authoritarian rule, Ranavalona was a respected leader among her people. She was seen as a defender of Malagasy tradition and culture, and she was also admired for her intelligence and strength of will. Ranavalona's legacy is complex and controversial. She was a ruthless and tyrannical ruler, but she was also a strong and capable leader who successfully defended her kingdom. She is a reminder of the complexities of human nature and the challenges of leadership. 7. The Queen with No Heart Catherine de' Medici 
It was no new news that Henry II of France had a lifelong affair with his mistress Diane de Poitiers. While on his deathbed, he begged his wife, Queen Catherine de' Medici, to allow him to see her. However, the queen didn't give in to his plea and even denied Diane entry into the room. The king died a lonely and painful death without his love by his side. However, that wasn't what made her a terrible queen. The queen mother had a rebellious daughter named Margaret who dared to cross her and Catherine took her revenge for this. Catherine would fight over her married daughter's adultery and affairs. It is said that Catherine's screams could be heard echoing throughout the palace. During one instance when the queen mother found out about her daughter's new romantic interest, she locked her up in a castle and never saw her again. We understand that these emotions may have stemmed from the fact that Catherine's husband had a mistress. But, she proved herself as one of the worst queens in history when she ordered her daughter's romantic interest to be executed in front of her. Her son, King Henry, found that cruel as well. He had him executed, but not in front of his sister. 8. One of the all-time hated queens, Marie Antoinette. France's queen between 1774 and 1792 was Marie Antoinette. She was also the last queen before the French Revolution. Marie Antoinette had quite a reputation for splurging on expensive things and found herself in many scandals. One such scandal was the affair of the diamond necklace. Countess de la Motte, a young lady, pretended to be the queen's friend and entered the French court in 1785. She fooled a high society member into believing that Antoinette loved him. She even hired a prostitute and disguised her as the queen and convinced the man that Antoinette wanted to purchase a diamond necklace. The jewelry cost $1,600,000 lives then, which is almost $12 million today. The money was never paid and the queen had no clue about what had taken place. Although Antoinette was innocent, the public despised her. History's most hated queens, Marie Antoinette, is known for her infamous dialogue. When the French subjects could not afford bread, she said, let them eat. Cake which fueled the French Revolution and ultimately led to her execution. Till date, Antoinette is regarded as one of the worst queens in history. However, historians now believe this was all just clever propaganda. Read about five myth-busting facts about Marie Antoinette. 9. The Bloody Mary, Mary I burned Protestants alive. Mary I, also known as Mary Tudor or Bloody Mary, was Queen of England and Ireland from 1553 to 1558. She was the eldest daughter of King Henry VIII and his first wife, Catherine of Aragon. Mary was a devout Catholic and she sought to restore Catholicism to England. After her father had broken away from the Catholic Church and formed the Church of England. During her five-year reign, Mary had over 280 Protestants burned at the stake for heresy. These persecutions earned her the nickname Bloody Mary. The persecutions were particularly severe in the years 1555 and 1556, when over 200 people were burned at the stake. There were a number of reasons why Mary persecuted Protestants. First, she was a devout Catholic and she believed that Protestantism was a threat to the Catholic faith. Second, she was angry at her father for breaking away from the Catholic Church and she believed that the only way to restore England to its rightful place was to return it to Catholicism. Third, she was seeking revenge for the persecution of Catholics during the reign of her brother, Edward VI. The Marian persecutions had a profound impact on England. They led to a great deal of bitterness and division between Catholics and Protestants. They also helped to solidify England's break from the Catholic Church. 10. Queen of Costile caressed her husband's dead body for years. The story of Queen Juana of Costile, also known as Juana La Loca Juana the Mad, is a tragic tale of love, loss, and mental illness. Juana, the daughter of King Ferdinand II of Aragon and Queen Isabella I of Costile, was married to King Philip I of Costile in 1496. The couple had six children together, but their marriage was not a happy one. 
Philip was often away from home and Juana became increasingly jealous and possessive. In 1506, Philip died suddenly of fever. Juana was devastated by his death and her mental state began to deteriorate. She refused to believe that Philip was dead and she kept his body embalmed and unburied. She would often sit with his body, talking to him as if he were still alive. Juana's behavior became increasingly erratic, and her family and advisors began to fear for her sanity. In 1509, they declared her unfit to rule and placed her under the care of her father. Juana spent the rest of her life in seclusion, never fully recovering from her grief. The story of Juana La Loca is a reminder of the devastating effects of grief and mental illness. It is also a cautionary tale about the dangers of unchecked power and the importance of seeking help when needed. 11. Queen Catherine allegedly murdered her husband. Queen Catherine of Aragon was the first wife of King Henry VIII of England. The rumor you're referring to might actually be about Henry VIII's second wife and Boleyn, who was accused of adultery, incest, and conspiring to murder the king. Henry VIII sought to annul his marriage to Catherine of Aragon because she hadn't borne him a male heir, leading him to break away from the Roman Catholic Church and establish the Church of England. After their divorce, Catherine lived in seclusion until her death, maintaining that her marriage to Henry was legitimate and she was the rightful queen. However, there are no verified historical accounts or evidence suggesting that Catherine was directly involved in her husband's death. And Boleyn, on the other hand, faced accusations of plotting against the king and was ultimately executed for treason, adultery, and incest. These charges were likely fabricated, serving Henry's desire to end their marriage and marry his third wife, Jane Seymour. The circumstances surrounding Anne Boleyn's trial and execution remain a subject of historical debate and intrigue, with many historians considering the charges against her to be politically motivated. 12. Diane de Poitiers, the one who made Catherine de' Medici a third wheel. Diane de Poitiers was a prominent figure in the French Renaissance. Known for her beauty, intellect, and influence at the court of King Henry II of France. She was the mistress of King Henry II for many years, starting when he was a young prince. Their relationship was quite remarkable for the time. Despite the significant age difference, Cedian was around 20 years older. Then Henry Thee shared a deep emotional connection and Diane became his confidant, advisor, and lover. She held immense sway over Henry, influencing his decisions and even political matters. Catherine de' Medici, Henry's wife, initially struggled with Diane's influence over her husband. Despite Catherine being the queen, Diane held a considerable amount of power and influence at court. Catherine was often relegated to a secondary role in Henry's life due to his strong attachment to Diane. Diane was renowned for her beauty and intelligence, and she used these attributes to maintain her position of influence. She was known for her wit, charm, and knowledge in various fields, including literature, art, and politics. However, Diane's influence faced challenges when Henry died in a jousting tournament in 1559. With his passing, Catherine de' Medici, now the Queen Dowager, sought to diminish Diane's power and influence over the court. Catherine began to assert her authority more forcefully, reclaiming her position and diminishing Diane's role. She gradually marginalized Diane from the political scene and took measures to regain control over the court and her children, who had been under Diane's influence for many years. Despite their past rivalry, Catherine didn't seek revenge on Diane after Henry's death. Instead, she allowed Diane to retain some of her properties and live in relative comfort until her death. Diane de Poitiers remains a fascinating figure in Historia Woman of Intelligence and Influence, who left a lasting mark on the French Renaissance court. Her relationship with Henry II and her rivalry with Catherine de Medici continue too. Intrigue historians and enthusiasts interested in the complexities of power, love, and politics in Renaissance France. 
Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more history content.